Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and we are on part two of converting the Finnish helmet to a German style World War II helmet. Now this is part two, and part two is gonna be paint removal slash paint application. Uh, this depends on your helmets. I prefer removing the paint because, for example, this paint, you know, it's glossy and smooth, and I just don't feel like it's going to, the paint's gonna to stick too well on this. Now this is uh, my M42 from at the front, a reproduction that I uh, refurbished and this is one that I removed the paint and applied the correct paint on it and as far as it looks like it is holding up very nicely so to do this these are the items that I use to remove the paint I just use a premium stripper uh, this is just basically a spray on uh, product that removes the paint um, so that's what I use some people sandblast their helmets um, I just don't have the ability for that and now for the other things, when you're applying the paint, you're gonna use this. This is from, as you can see, 1944 Militaria. And it is the Fieldgrau Dunkel, or Dark Field Gray. And this is common for, you know, as it says, M40, 42s. But really this is common for helmets from about 1940, 1941, on to about the end of the war. Um, so you could have an M35 if it's a late war issue. So this is the paint we're using, and as you can see on the at the front paint, it is a very, very good paint, very accurate, highly recommended. And of course, we can't forget the texture. Now, what the Germans used was aluminum oxide, and uh, if I got the name of that wrong, I'm going to put a little correction on the screen there, but um, it's basically very fine uh, grain aluminum. Some people use sawdust, uh, but sawdust is a bit bigger, and it's not very uh, correct, so if you really want to be correct, it would be aluminum oxide. So those are the products that you'll need, and let's get to the next step. All right, so now we're doing the uh, paint removal section. Uh, this depends on really what your scenario is. Some of you may have a workbench, uh, some of you may not. I don't, and I'm doing this outside on a blanket, and I don't want to get it, you know, messy. So I just put it in a cardboard box, and I have it on a little, you know, little stand there, just so, it, you know, it's not as far down in the box. Um, of course, it just depends on your scenario, what you prefer using. So now we're just going to use our paint stripper and we're going to spray it in there. That's what it's going to look like. And basically you're going to do that for really the whole helmet. It's just going to take a minute. <laughs> and then um, we'll just let it sit there for a couple minutes. So there we have it just about completely covered. And I'm going to leave it sit for a minute. Uh, let the, the chemicals do its thing. And then we're going to come back and take it all off. Uh, one thing to remember is, you know, do this in either outside like I am or in well-ventilated well -ventilated area. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's good to avoid breathing in chemicals as much as possible. So something like this, you know, don't, don't do it in your bedroom or your living room. Try to do it in the garage outside or if you have a big fan on. Just remember that. All right, so I left the helmet alone for, I don't know, 30 minutes-ish. And uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the paint is like bulging out. Like, uh, let's see if we can get a closer look at it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the paint's basically bulging out. <laughs> let's go ahead and remove it. All right, so what I did is I just took a, uh, a paper towel and started just kind of wiping it off and it it slides right off. Um, you might need like a, maybe a flathead screwdriver or something like that to help peel it off. But um, yeah, just you know, kind of push it off and to the box and uh let's look at that so there's the the paint <laughs> wow so i'm gonna keep doing this and we'll see what it looks like bare all right so now that you have most if not all the paint removed um we're gonna want to go ahead and rinse it just so we don't have any of that paint remover you know residue left behind and it also clean off any flakes that may have gone stuck from you trying to rub it off so let's begin <laughs> All right, so now that I got rinsed up and dried up, um, basically what I'm going to do is just sand it a bit. And this is just, you know, in case there's any uh, rough spots or, you know, flaky spots that I wouldn't come off. Just kind of give it a bit more of a smooth surface. So that's what we're going to do. Um, really just, uh, what is this? Sandpaper 240. That's really all you need because this is just for, you know, some simple sanding. So let's continue. Uh, let's start. All right, so once you sanded it, you know, cleaned up any any residue on there, you can spray paint. Now, one can is going to be enough for the helmet. Uh, when I did my other helmets, I had a one can, 
gave me enough for one helmet for two coats and the other helmet for I think one or two coats as well. So one can is plenty for one helmet, but I still have a little bit left over, so I'm gonna use what's left. Then we'll get to the full can. Now obviously, you know, this is just like spray painting anything else. You wanna have it at a bit of a distance and kinda of do small increments like that. And I'm gonna keep doing that and we're gonna see how it turns out. Now, of course, one thing to think of is this is the perfect time to put your aluminum oxide on there. It's good to do it, you know, you're gonna do more than one uh, coat of paint. And it's good to do it really on the first one and then after that the second really you only need two coats uh, the second coat of paint will you know harden over it so the first one's going to help stick to it and then the second one's going to help harden over it to protect it now what i'm doing is i'm using a uh, where you go and use garlic <laughs> um, but just can't use like a salt shaker or something like that these holes are a bit big so i have to be careful but it's going to help you um, distribute the aluminum oxide a bit more evenly than if you're using your fingers so, of course, got to get this wet because I kind of forgot to do it myself. Oh my. All right. And then kind of just drizzle over it. Now, of course, like I said, this these are bigger holes, so it is going to be a bit um, uneven. But that's kind of how you want to do it. You're going to kind of just want to work that around the entire helmet. All right, so this is what it looks like now with the aluminum oxide. And sorry about the lighting, it's sunset time. And um, so yeah, I'm kind of struggling with the light. But uh, as you can see, there's some spots with a whole bunch of it on there. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna give it about two hours. Uh, approximately two hours is gonna allow me, you know, allow the paint to dry so that when I touch it, it's not gonna rub off or chip off as easily. And after those two hours, I'm gonna go ahead, maybe with some light sandpaper, I haven't decided yet. But I'm going to kind of uh, scrape off some of the excess aluminum oxide because German helmets were not heavily textured, textured as, you know, GI helmets were. So this right now is way too much aluminum oxide, but I'd rather have too much than too little for my first coat because I can always go back and, you know, kind of scrap off, scrape off uh, the excess. So I will see you in about two hours. So unfortunately, after the two hours, it had gotten dark, so I had to take pictures instead. But as you can see here, the helmet is well textured, and now I had to spray paint it in the dark. Uh, so I just did that, spray painted the second coat on there. And as you can see in this photo, I did the inside. A little hard to see, but I also went ahead and did the inside. All right, so as you may have noticed from the pictures, um, by the time the two hours passed, it got dark. And um, so I did the spray painting in the dark, I had a flashlight so that I could show you, you know, what it looks like hardened. So this is basically the finished product. Um, you know, the texture, I kind of had a hard time getting it off. But, you know, with wear and tear, more is going to come off and it's going to smooth out and so on. But as you can see, the color is very nice. Um, of course, the way the light is hitting, as you can see with my hand, it's... Uh, the lighting does kind of mess with it a bit. But trust me, it's a very good green-gray, uh, as it should be on the originals. Now, some disclaimers. Um, if you made it this far without commenting what i'm about to say good job otherwise um if you're writing the comment go back and watch this part but uh, yes there are better methods of doing this you know sandblasting it would be better um you know <laughs> there's just better ways of painting it but not everyone can you know has the ability to sandblast their helmet um and yes you could paint over the paint but i just wasn't feeling confident that it would stick turns out on the inside it's sticking pretty well so that's good to know and you could probably just go ahead and spray paint over it so that you won't have these random uh, bumps there. And one thing to remember, unlike I did, is uh, to also spray paint your um, slit pins because obviously they would not be this, you know, chrome silver color. They would be painted their correct color. So while you're spray painting your helmet, go ahead and spray paint these as well. Um, and as far as I know, the tunic buns were also the same shade of field gray. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were. Otherwise, they're very similar. So go ahead and do the buns too if you want to. Yeah, so let's go ahead and spray those. All right, so that was part two of converting the finished helmet to a wartime German helmet. And part three is going to be installing the liner. So stick with that and I'll see you on part three. Have a good day.